Alright guys, my name is Thomas Passy, and today I'm going to be going over some beginner tarantulas. And this video is intended to help first time keepers and people who want to get into keeping tarantulas. And the reason you're seeing a Chilean rosehair tarantula right here as the first scene in this video is because this was actually my first tarantula. Some people argue that Chilean rosehairs aren't good for first time keepers. But I actually disagree with that. I do think that they make very good pets for first time keepers. And uh, even though sometimes they can be a bit moody, for someone like me who doesn't hold their tarantulas ever, that's not a problem at all. When picking out your first tarantula, you need to make sure that you get a species that isn't very fast moving. Uh, that's the main thing with uh, beginner and advanced tarantulas. Uh, you need to be ready for their speed. So most beginner tarantulas should be slow moving or as slow as possible. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then you also want to make sure that they have an all right temperament. Uh, Chilean rose hairs can be moody at times. So that's why some people might not recommend them as first time tarantulas. Uh, but since I don't handle my tarantulas, that's not a problem. If you don't handle tarantulas, you can keep any tarantula and not worry uh, too much about their temperament. So in addition to all that, you're going to want to get a tarantula that doesn't have a potent venom. Uh, the Chilean rosehair does not have a potent venom. And none of the tarantulas I'll show in this video will have potent venom either. Uh, but then, after all of that, the final thing that you want to make sure is that you get a species that does very well in captivity. Most tarantulas do well in captivity, so as long as you don't get any weird species, or anything that most beginners don't get, you should be fine. I liked owning a Chilean rosehair as my first tarantula because it served as a base to all my other tarantulas. I was really interested in owning colorful tarantulas and just the idea that I started off with a regular brown one and then worked my way up to the ones that have a lot of color is something that really interested me. So I started off with my Chilean rosehair and then I moved on to my Mexican red knee tarantula, which was an upgrade from this one because it has beautiful colors. Right now, I'm gonna show you guys another tarantula that isn't my Mexican red knee tarantula, but is also a good beginner species. One last note I'd like to make about the Chilean rosehair tarantulas is that these guys are very easy to find for sale. So you guys won't have a problem locating them, uh, but some of the other tarantulas might be a little bit harder depending on which one you choose. So that's all I have to say about this one. And once again, I know there's going to be people who don't agree with me when I say that this is a good tarantula for first time keepers, but it worked for me and it worked for a bunch of other people. So I definitely recommend it. All right, guys. So here's my curly hair tarantula. This is a tarantula that makes a great pet for first time keepers. And uh, they look similar to the Chilean rose hair tarantula, but they're a lot more fluffier. So some of you might like that about the curly hairs. Uh, recently, I have found these guys to be a bit harder to find. Uh, the Chilean rose hairs are definitely easier to find. So you might be able to pick one up at a reptile expo. Uh, you'll definitely find some slings around. Slings are just what we call baby tarantulas. Uh, but I don't recommend you get a sling if you're a first time keeper. Uh, just because some of the care is a little bit more specific. Uh, not necessarily hard, but uh, you're going to want a little bit of experience owning a bigger tarantula before you try to care for a baby one. I do think curly hairs have a better temperament than the Chilean rose hair tarantulas, but I've actually found these to be very fast moving. So sometimes this tarantula will just come out of the enclosure and start moving around and it can actually walk really fast and uh, much faster than my Chilean rose hair tarantula. So that might be something you want to watch out for but honestly, it's nothing too bad and uh, a beginner should be able to handle this. Also, I would like to mention that the curly hairs are much better eaters than the Chilean rosehair tarantulas. So if you want a tarantula that eats uh, very well and like you just throw a little worm in and eats, I would rather go with this species than the Chilean rosehair tarantula because my Chilean rosehair tarantula can be a bit boring at times and just not eat. But uh, this one never skipped a meal. All right guys, so here is my beautiful Mexican red knee tarantula. And uh, the first thing I would like to point out is that if you're gonna get into keeping tarantulas, scientific names are very important. 
The scientific name of this tarantula used to be Brachypelma smithii, uh, but now another tarantula holds that name, and this one is now called Brachypelma hamori. And uh, that's an important thing to take note of because you want to make sure that you're buying the right species. Uh, there are several different kinds of red knee tarantulas and uh, several different kinds of Brachypelma species. Uh, in general, I do recommend any Brachypelma species as a good first time tarantula. So after we're done looking at this Mexican red knee tarantula, I'm going to show you guys a Mexican fire leg tarantula which is in the same genus as this tarantula, but it's a different species. All right guys, so right here is my Mexican fire leg tarantula. And this is another species that makes a very good pet for first time keepers. They're very easy to take care of. And they also have a really good feeding response. Another thing that makes this tarantula a good beginner species is that its venom isn't very potent. Other Brachypelma species, like the Mexican red knee tarantula, doesn't have potent venom either and they tend to have good feeding responses and they get a good size too so that's why i think these spiders make great first time pets for beginner keepers all right this species we have right here is called the texas brown tarantula these tarantulas are very easy to take care of and you might even find one in texas if you live there so the scientific name of this species is a hensi and uh, honestly they make great eaters uh, their venom isn't potent and they grow to be a pretty good size. I've seen them get really big actually. So this is just another species to look at and keep in mind, but I still recommend a Mexican red knee or another tarantula that I've shown already. All right, so moving on, we have the salmon pink bird eater tarantula. And uh, I do think this one makes a good species for beginners, uh, even though it holds the scary bird eater name. Uh, there's nothing to be afraid about with this spider. They get very big and they are actually very friendly from what I've experienced. I have experienced mood swings with these, just like with my Chilean Rosehair Tarantula. But overall, I do think these make good pets for beginners. Uh, the one you're seeing right now is actually my smallest one, and this one was actually super tiny, but these guys grow really fast, so we have nothing to worry about. Uh, even though I still don't recommend slings for beginners, uh, right now I'll show you one of mine that's a little bit bigger and this is the size that you should probably get it at if not already a mature female so I'll show you that right now alright guys so here is the bigger salmon pink bird eater uh, I would say this is my medium size one because I still have one that's even bigger than this one and uh, I'll show you guys that one right now after this one but yeah once again these guys do grow very fast if you're gonna buy one buy it at this size or bigger I would say this tarantula is over four inches big right now, but if you're gonna get a tarantula, I would say that the minimum size you should buy it at is four inches big because that allows room for some growth and you'll be able to experience uh, molting hopefully sooner than later. And uh, yeah, that's my recommendation size wise. So let's move on to the bigger version of this same spider. All right guys, so here is my huge salmon pink bird eater tarantula. This is the biggest one I have. It's a female. And uh, there was one of you who commented uh, to clean the mold inside of this enclosure. And uh, this is not mold right here. This is just a little bit of sand that's inside of the enclosure. So you don't have to worry about that. It's just a little bit of sand. And uh, yeah, this is how big they get. I would say this one is maybe eight, seven, eight inches big. Uh, she's a pretty good size, so yeah, even though these guys get pretty big, I do recommend them as a beginner tarantula. Honestly, I don't know if I would get this tarantula as a first tarantula myself. I would still go for the Mexican red knee or the Chilean rosehair tarantula, but if this is the only thing you have available, it's not going to do you harm to buy it. Alright, so as I've said before, any spider in the Brachypelma genus tends to make a good pet for first time keepers. And uh, this is Brachypelma vegans, the Mexican red rump tarantula. Uh, this is a good spider for beginners, so I do recommend them. If you don't like any of the spiders you've seen so far in this video, and you want something that's a little bit out of the ordinary, just go ahead and Google the word Brachypelma. A bunch of species should come up, including this spider, and the Mexican fire leg, and the Mexican red knee. 
and a few others should come up that I didn't show in this video and maybe from there you can find your perfect first spider. Alright guys, so here's my Costa Rican zebra tarantulas enclosure. If you look up here, it has made a burrow and uh, this is what people call pet holes uh, because they always live inside of this hole and they never come out. Uh, this species is very good for beginners, but one thing you might want to be careful with is that I don't think you should buy this species if you want a tarantula that will be out all the time because there is always a possibility that it will make a hole like this and just live in it and you'll never see it. So if you don't plan on getting more than one tarantula, I don't recommend this species. Uh, but if you plan on having many tarantulas, this is a great addition to your collection. And uh, yeah, if you don't want a pet hole, don't get a Costa Rican zebra tarantula. All right guys, so last but not least is my Chaco Golden Knee tarantula. This tarantula is beautiful and gets very big. And uh, I have found this one to be very easy to take care of. And uh, this one does like to dig, as you can see right here. Uh, that substrate is much lower than the initial substrate. I have a whole video on my channel about how much this tarantula digs. So if you guys want to check out that video, please head over to my channel and subscribe while you're at it. Alright, so that's all I have for you guys today. If you guys learned something new, let me know in the comments. And also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, because I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers. I hope you found what you're looking for inside of this video. And yeah, thanks for watching.